Welcome back to Let's Clone. Tactical difficulties. This is getting redundant for me to try to do. I'm making Bomberman. Gonna follow along. Do that. I've had this on the channel before, but it's more of a devlog at the time, and I didn't break it into parts. This time I'm not really breaking it into parts, but I'm gonna do all of the coding here. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know. I have already gone in and took all of the sprites, not all the explosion sprites. I'll do with that later. If you don't know how to cut sprites into doobly frames, then there'll be a little thing floating in the top of the video on that. It's really bug and simple. I don't want to do it every time. And I'm not sure how far I'll get right now. So let's start. Okay, so we're going to start off with making the room. I've already put these bits in. We have the width of 496. You'll see why in a second. And a height of 240. That was the NES height. I'm doing the NES one. Um, we are going to need a viewport, so enable that. View zero, visible. Go on a 256 by 240, that is the NES dimension. Technically, I think it was like 220 something, but fuck it, we're going 240. And then I'm doubling that because I don't want to see it so tiny, so make that whatever size you want to scale it up. If you go by two or four, that'd be ideal. I'm going to set my object to, or do a system object, so my camera's going to be that. I'm just going to share the functionality between the two. Now, for the room width is a sprite that I already threw in there. I Hopefully there will be a link in the bottom of where you can download the sprites. If not, you can Google it. it. It can take long. There'll be a link to something. There is easy. Let's go down to environment, background. This one in my other project I already slightly dolled out the, the wall pieces just so I knew like when the real ones were in. I wasn't just looking at the image. You could just use this and then make the collision masks. It, we're doing it my way. That is set, that is set. I think everything is there except for let's plop the system. Uh, I wanted to act, oh, hold up buddy. It's good instance. I want to make this little grid though. What did we have? So we have 240 and I want to do the 420 on Y. Why am I not seeing it? Uh, there we go. And then here, that would also, that's five, 256. No, that's 128. That's what we want. All right, I'm just throwing that in the center of the room. Boop, don't need you. Uh, room, room set. If we press play, we're already almost in the game. Now let's get a player getting going here. Object, uh, player. I'm gonna, I'll do. I always change up what convention I wanna use. Uh, da, 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 play your sprites. One with that young idol, where you at? Add event. Create event. Init player. Uh, let's see, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna have some, some movement stuff going on. We're gonna have horizontal speed, uh, vertical speed. We're gonna have speed, uh, we'll guess six for now. Uh, there's no real friction. We're gonna have a target X and a target Y. This will make going around corners much easier. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, we'll need other booleans later on for if we've dropped a bomb or whatnot, or if we're dying, all that good stuffs. Oh, uh, let me, fucking my bad, let me, Hopefully this is better, my bad. If you couldn't read before, that's all the code we've written. Uh, da, 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 that event, let's get a step event in here. So step event. Um, uh, do this every time. <laughs> uh, we need listen for player input. Usually I put a script here, but do we really need to? I don't. I don't think we need to. We're gonna do an input. Um, right is equal to keyboard. Check. We don't want to press, so just check. Virtual key. Right. Up, left, and down. So, whoa! You don't do that to me. Boop. Up. Boop. Left and down. Oh my god! Everything in the world. Right. Up. Come on now. Left. Lastly, down, bang. Uh, we're going to need 
input um, bomb, keyboard check, I'll do press, and I'll just make that space for now. Uh, before I go anywhere, step event, we're going to give our system rate step event. Um, no. I don't, I don't know. Uh, we're going to reset. This always gets me if I don't put it in right away. Uh, if keyboard check pressed, you suck. Escape. There. It would have. I would have forgot it if I didn't do it right now. Um, so we're putting bombs down. Well, not really, but we've got the spot for it. Now, let's see. Get movement input. We'll say that variable move h is equal to input right. Am I doing capitals? Yes. Minus input. Oopsies. Left. Do I want to do it with the speeds? Yeah, no. No. Uh, variable move vertical is equal to input uh, down minus that young yeah, input up. So now we know if we're doing some, some, some. Uh, so I actually want to be setting a target. So I need to know um, can we move? Uh, so we'll say if x is equal to target x. Did I capitalize that yeah. No. And y is equal to target y. Okay. Before this, we haven't really been doing anything worth explaining, I hope. We have inputs for all the inputs <laughs> that we're going to need to get on the keyboard. We're using a move h and move v to check if we have any horizontal or vertical inputs. Input right, uh, Game Maker has everything going to the right. Oh fuck, I don't know if I'm going to be pointing in the correct directions. I think it's backwards. You're going to be looking at it like this, so no, we're good. I think <laughs> if it's going to the right, then it's increasing, and if it's going down, then it's increasing. So the top left part of the screen is uh, a coordinate zero, zero. So we are checking for move H is move horizontal is one if we're holding it to the right, and it is uh, well, 1 minus 0 if we're holding it to the right, and it is 1 minus 1 if we're holding both, and it is 0 minus 1 if we're holding left. So it'll be negative 1 if we're left, 0 if we're going to put 1 if we're positive, 1 right. Same thing for up and down. Again, down is positive. That just lets us know what direction our input is. Now, I don't want to have to deal with curving around the corners because our character is 16 sprites wide, and each corridor is 16 sprites wide. And to make sure that you're on that, it's, it's not terrible, but I don't want to deal with it. So I'm just going to make sure we are on our target step, and if we are, we can look for a new target. The target will always be exactly 16 pixels away in one of the available directions. Um, then we're just going to move towards that target. Bang it. Let's do it. There's a, can we move? So if we are currently sitting on our target, we can. Um, then else. absolute value of move h. Right, it's either true or false if there's input or not. So if we can move h then target x is equal to x plus so I just move h times I'm not going to be sprite width but 16. And then we will say else. So we're going to prioritize horizontal input then I guess I need to have done that if or whatever. If the absolute value of move v, then the same thing. Target y is equal to y plus move vertical times 16. Now that can only run if we if these are not the exact same. So otherwise we have to move towards that. Now I need to do x plus equals. Do I need to run this into? No, because I can multiply it by the move h. Um, 
move h times speed. And this should work. If it doesn't, we'll figure out why. Uh, times speed. Doink. Oh shit, I'm stupid. All right. If I can made the variables that make this not an issue, and if I can didn't use them. Uh, so here, if I'm setting that there, I'm going to set the target to a new place, and then actually, I should. S yeah, yeah, fuck it, I'll set it here, why not? H plus is equal to, and then here we do the move. This isn't the, my favorite way to do it, I don't know, it feels a bit but weird throwing this here, but we're, it's gonna work. Move vertical multiplied by the young speed. Boop. But when I am on target, then I can do. Room and take this young boy. I won't put you above. No. I won't mean, put you above. I won't mean, I don't want to put you in it. Put it above it. Okay. I want to put you below it. Nice. So let's take this young boy and oh no. Uh, 16 by. That's caps lock. That's not enough tabs. There we go. 16 by 16. Put this young buck right there. Boom. Boom. First time running the code, it's definitely going to work. But look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This boy now can just walk all around all day, wherever he wants. Um, oh, fuck. I hate how satisfying this gets already. But I think that actually might be a little bit quick. This always got to walk at 1 pp. If see that feels a little better, throwing the walls will make speedier progress after this. Although I probably cut out all of me walking around with making that move wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, this is it. I mean, it's the slowest that I want to make them go because otherwise I have to deal with fucking fractions. But this is nice. <laughs> So let's go in here. We can make an object of this young uh, wall and then like place them in the room everywhere we need to go. But we need a random floor anyway, so we need to scramble and loop through all of our potential spots to begin with. Why not just place them while we're looping if we already got it? So that's, that's what we're gonna do, executive decision. We are going to come down here, there we go. Uh, environment. We got a young wall. Um, I don't need anything. You don't need to know anything. You can be a dumb wall. Those. Oh man, I should have made a sprite for the environment. Create a group. Sprites. Boop. 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 Oh, I don't want the object wall in there. Boop. 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 Very good. We got a wall. We got a system. We gotta create. Uh, actually, ooh, let me. S no, that's a step. I don't want the step. I do want the create. Uh, we will do init system. Uh, I also gotta follow the Hachima Hooper the player. I'll do that next. All right, fuck. <laughs> I'm going all the other place. So we're gonna do the camera stuff because we already got the player in there. He's already moving. So the camera. It's just time. Um, so camera stuff. We're just going to. Uh, all the player. That's it. Uh, X is equal to object player dot X. Banging camera stuff is done. The rest will be handled in the room. We'll go there later. How many blocks are in this? So we need uh, width is equal to some number of blocks. We need a height is equal to some number of blocks. And we need a uh, Y offset is equal to some number of amount. We have a width of 31, we have a height of 13, and we have a Y offset of, fuck, I gotta do math. All right, so we know that we have 240 pixels overall, and now we know we have 13 of those 16 fucking tall things. So that's what, 160 times 16, 32. <laughs> 
48. So 160 times 48, that's 208. And then we have 240, so that's what, 32? Yeah. All right. So we got a 32 gap for our y offset. Now, we got everything we need. Hopefully you understand why we have those numbers. Uh, let's go down to our other, our room start. So here when our room starts, we are going to uh, build room. So we need to make a loop of a variable i is equal to zero. i is less than our width. Yep, I'll go with that. And then i plus plus, if there's something fucked with it, we will fix it. And then we're going to make another loop in which we spell correctly. Uh, j is equal to zero. J is less than our height, also spelled correctly. And our j is gonna increment. Cool. So what we need to do is we need to loop all the way across the grid. We're not using DS grids, makes me a little bit sad because we could, but I'm gonna not. We're gonna loop through and any time that we are on the top or the bottom of this loop, we're going to make a block. So, uh, uh, build that wall. We need an instance create at depth. Um, it is going to be at wherever i times 16, which is our width. I should have made that per, per size, but fuck it. We're gonna hard code it. J times, yeah, uh, 16. You suck. And then object wall. I'm pretty sure that's all I need to know. Oh, fuck. Depth. Object wall. So this is our code to create one of these. We need to know when it should. So we're going to say if uh, i is equal to zero. Oh, my guy, we also goofed. You see here, this is j times 16. That's our y. We need to plus that y offset. Now we're banging. If i is equal to zero, we also need if i is equal to height and if j is equal to zero and j is equal to height. Um, so we will do some logical ors, why not? See how this does. Or if j is equal to zero, uh, or if i is equal to oops, width, or minus one, I think. If you're wrong on that, we'll play with it later j is equal to height minus one. If any of those are true, we're gonna build block. On the room start event, which is the create event, but triggered on the room start. And we should look at that. So we have blocks along the top, blocks along the left, blocks, oh, we gotta change something in a bit. And let's see if we made it all the way to the correct, dang it. Okay, we're good, we're good. I'm, I'm keen, I'm digging it. This bothered me, so we're gonna go in the room and do something. We're gonna come down here to our viewport and camera. We're gonna come down to the viewport zero. We're gonna come down to, oops, the camera. Um, what I don't like is the horizontal border. I would like that to be at the 256 because it's 512. So no, 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 128. And then negative one. All right, so that's that's just gonna mean that halfway, like we have this box here that's 256 by 200 by 240, whatever. Uh, if the horizontal is anywhere 128 pixels from either side, then it's gonna lock in there. And since that's halfway, it's just gonna stick to the center. I hope that made sense. Uh, horizontal speed of negative one means that it will just stick on that position. If we set that to a speed, then the camera a speed slower than the player speed, then the player could run and run towards the edge of the frame, and then the camera would slowly catch up. Uh, we're not gonna do that. That's not that. That's not how this game goes. Let's go. Uh, else, um, now let's hear. Let's uh, build pillars. And we will say, if I mod two, yeah, uh, then I want this young thing. Let's just see where, where that brings us. Okay, well, we got that wrong, so let's do I plus one, not two, and then we will do an and uh, J. Probably gonna have to be a plus one as well. 
j plus 1. And I want to make sure that these are both inside for that. And then mod, not mode, you know. What did I say, you know? You nerd. Um, modulo, if you don't know, is just like division, but the answer is the remainder. Any even number divided by 2, the remainder is 0. So modulo is 0. Um, and holy shit, look at that. So we now have our map built. And that's pretty neat. Our player can still walk right through them. So we gotta fix that next. Uh, room start, go away. I don't need to know about you anymore, so you can go away. Uh, you can go away. Player, let's see. In our step event, if we are allowed to move, and then we are saying boop and boop, now, so we're going to do this, then we're going to do here. We're going to say, if place meeting at target x, target y, and it is an object wall. So this is going to, if we have adjusted our target x and our target y, we're going to do that. Uh, and then I want to say if there's not, so that's what I want. I want that to be here. I would like for this to be here. This will allow me to walk in diagonals. I don't want to walk in diagonals. Um, wait. No. Yes. It fucking will. No, it won't. So if here we will do move view is equal to zero. Okay, so my concern was that say I uh, I'm holding a horizontal and a vertical. It's going to come through here. It's going to move that the horizontal was correct and it's going to make that adjustment, uh, that adjustment, and then it's going to skip over this. But then when I get down here, it's going to add uh, my movement speed because this has been determined already. So now if I'm reading a horizontal, I'm setting movement to zero, my vertical movement to zero. If I'm reading a movement vertical, that means that horizontal failed already, so it's already set to zero. So we're fine. So no diagonals. Uh, these, uh, I, that was when I was proving something to myself. Goal. Now let's say, uh, yeah, avoid. Avoid wall. So we're actually doing a collision list collision. I'm, I'm fine with that. This would actually have been a perfect opportunity to use a DS grid because there's no point in having all those wall objects, especially if I'm not actually colliding with them. So running along a grid would have made so much more sense. But, oh shit, okay. We, we got most of the way there. So this is true, I am avoiding and I'm only moving if it's not gonna be a wall. Um, and then I will say else, whoops, I need to reset target. Uh, so then target x would be equal to x and target y would be equal to y. And that should not have done what it did. My water. All right, so we can walk all day, all day, all day. What happens? Banging, banging, banging. OK, and then, oh, nice. So we got that there. Should we do bombs yet? No, we got to still make the, the rest of the wall. Uh, so we need another object. Let's get in here. We're going to do a young duplicate. We're going to do the young swooplicate. And let's get what are those? I call them bricks. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> so we got bricks. We have. We're going to assign environment wall as the parent of the brick. That'll make sense. Oh, that just makes the collisions work uh, without us having to do anything about it. We're going to get the environment sprite of the brick, which actually has a speed. So this needs to know some stuff. And then brick. Oh, you suck. Why'd you tell me that? <laughs> okay. Um, image speed is equal to zero. Uh, now, you suck. Come on now. If I come down to a young step event, this is, this is, some saucy stuff, I guess. If the floor spelled with an F, 
of our image index is equal to image number minus one. You are just awful at this stuff today, Stephen, right? Um, then instance destroy. So we are moving through our image animation speed at some point when we decide to destroy this brick, it's gonna go through all of those frames. If the image index is equal to the image number, image number is how many frames we have. And since we're counting from zero, so the first frame is image index zero and not image number one or index one, so we can never get to that number. We will always have n minus one available spots. So if our image index is equal to our image number minus one, it means we are at the end of the animation. However, image index will be incrementing by whatever our image speed is. So it might be at a fraction or a decimal. So I'm taking the floor of the image index, which means we're just dropping off the, the remainder. And then, bam, we're checking that and we're good. Uh, if we make that number, if we get to the end of the sequence, cuts it. So usually I'll add an extra frame. Sometimes it'll be a little wonky, but this this should be fine. And then destroy it. So now those can be destroyed. And that's actually not even important yet because they don't exist. Uh, so system, that would be back into our room start. So create step, no, room start. Here we built the path. And then that was just an if uh, those modulus were correct. So now we can build the brakes. Uh, oops, else. Do I need to do an if? Oh, we just want the else. Uh, well, fuck, I do actually want. So now we're going to do a random. So if I random, uh, let's do what, one third of the time. So if I ran that's a, yeah, it should be a third of the time because I ran it should be number zero, one, or two. If it is equal to zero, so one third of that, then I would like to create one of these guys, but we'll change it a little bit. And then here, cool. Now there's a problem with this. Two problems with this. One's not actually a problem with this. Uh, this gives the opportunity to spawn a brick on top of the player, and it also gives the opportunity to spawn too many bricks around the player that you can't go anywhere, like in, in this setting right here. Uh, second problem is that if I hit a... Oh, shit! It does randomize. It's just that every time we start... I got hit myself. I didn't set, I didn't set a randomized seed, so every time we start this game, it's going to have the same seed, and it'll always start off the same way, but we and when we regenerate, it will always do the same cycle, so I'm going to change that too. But you can see in all of these, several illegal patterns. You can't have this. Uh, as long as these three are available, you can start the map because you can set a bomb and move and hide around a corner. Um, I can't move through them. Let's do this though. But like, bang, like the, the collision works. Again, a DS grid would be so much better for handling all of these objects, but who cares? Yeah, let's eliminate those. I don't want to do it here, but I will. If, so we have. Uh, I is equal to, I'm going to need these all different parentheses, U, let me get down there. Um, so if I is equal to 1 uh, and J is equal to 1, because that would be where the player is. Um, so then OR, which I will actually use here. If I is equal to one and J is equal to two, and then another, those are wrong. Or if I is equal to two and J is equal to one. This is correct. So we will say now, if I if er, so if this square or this square or this square, then we're gonna do nothing else. Then we're gonna do that. This that's a terrible way to code. <laughs> that's a that's a silly stupid way to do this. 
but I don't feel like thinking too much and this should work and hopefully it makes sense. I just took those three potential positions and we're saying, no, nah, do nothing. Okay. And now, cool. I will do this a bunch of times and hope that none of these three squares ever fill. Every other square on the map should be acceptably interchanging. I could even do a perfect test of this. Bang, look at that. So we have a player, we have brick walls, we can move around. We can't drop our bombs yet, we can't get our bonuses yet, we can't kill our enemies yet, we can't die from those enemies yet. We can't get points yet. Oh man, <laughs> there's still so much. Uh, no, it's going decent though. Let's plant, let's, let's drop some bombs. So let's, let's say, uh, our cooldown is equal to zero. And we will say our cooldown um, delay is equal to 60. And then we will say, we're doing all the target stuff, we're moving on all that stuff. Let's, uh, uh, let's get out of that. Let's say, drop some bombs. Uh, we're going to say if a cooldown, oops, if cooldown is equal to zero. We'll say if input bomb, we will say now instance create Oh fuck, depth. Well, instance, <laughs> uh, at our current x, y, um, depth, and then an object bomb. Oh, we haven't made one of those yet, have we? Nah. Uh, but that is what we want. So let's come into here now. Let's create us a young object. Old bomb. Uh, boop. You young bomb need a sprite for the player. The sprite of the bomb. Add event. We create event. Uh, let's say image speed is equal to zero point five. Um, and then we will add an event for. Uh, yeah, I guess an alarm. I will say. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna say instance create depth at x y uh, depth. Then we're gonna do an object for blast. Whoops, we don't have that yet. Same problem as before. And then we are going to do instance destroy in our create. We are going to say that alarm spell correctly. Stupid zero is equal to. 120. I don't. I don't know. Two seconds is too long, but whatever. So we have an image speed of 0.5. We're gonna see if that's too fast or not. We are setting in our create event for our bomb, mind you, our alarm zero to 120. Uh, that's just gonna create a ticker that when this hits zero or I think technically negative one, whatever code is in alarm zero will pop. We are going to here create a blast, which will scale out to the appropriate size later on. I'm not doing that right now. Um, and then we are destroying the bomb itself and the blast will be remaining. So that should be fine other than this error right here because we don't have a blast yet. Uh, let's actually take a duplicate of this code for our blast. Let's, uh, I'm just going to organize this again. I'm going to change the sprite. That's the wrong button, my guy over to my blast. I, this isn't the correct blast sprite. I didn't feel like doing all the act because we're gonna have to do things with rotating it. It's gonna be a lot of work later on for another me. Here we will say for a short amount of time, this line of code doesn't matter because we don't have an image speed. Uh, and we're just going to destroy the self. So now, 
what happens after so if cooldown is zero and we hit the bomb button we're going to create an instance of the bomb the bomb will then go through a time lapse of 120 frames and then it will create a blast for the sprite and then it will uh that will die after 60 frames we also want to increase our cooldown um so we'll say cooldown is equal to cool cooldown delay and then no matter what we'll do cooldown is equal to the maximum between zero and uh, cooldown minus one um, so every frame cooldown will be knocked down and down and down until it is at zero uh, if cool bomb is equal to or cool bomb if cooldown is equal to zero, then we're going to check to see if our input bomb is being pressed. If input bomb is being pressed, why are you saying something weird? No, oh. how about cooldown is equal to cooldown delay? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so if we press a bomb, we are setting our cooldown so we can't make another bomb. And we're setting the instance of the bomb. And to reiterate one more time, for no reason, I don't think we're going into our bomb object, setting a, setting a timer for 120 frames that will pop the alarm zero, telling us to create a blast object and destroy ourself. From there, we will set an alarm for 60 frames in which it will destroy itself. Let's fucking see if that worked. Uh, ooh, one other thing, I'm actually going to take the bomb. I'm going to also make it parent with uh, the wall, I think. Like we're building the bomb with the player right, right where we're sitting, which is fine. Yeah, that should be fine. Because then once we move, we can't go back. And that, that's exactly what we want. Be nice. So we can still walk. I should get rid of that little marker. I'm gonna hit space and holy shit, look at that! And then look at that. Ah, oh, this is banging. Uh, but now if I go up, I can't move back down. And when it's fire, I can. And that's. This is just. And, oh, oh. That's something that's got to be checked for. Okay. So look at that. That's banging. Everything's working fine. I don't know if you noticed what went wrong, but I could place the bomb not in a target spot. Uh, and that's because I should actually be. Well, cooldown should always be um, counting down but I only want to be able to drop a bomb when I'm able to move. So if I am on target, uh, do I want to be able to drop a bomb and move at the same time though? I don't see why not. Um, yeah. Uh, so if I am on target, then I'm going to stop moving. Just some context for what's going on. Uh, get movement. What is that already called? Yeah. Oh, actually, set movement, and then avoid walls, reset target. Okay, that's that's enough commenting. Uh, for our input, if we don't check for pressed, maybe it doesn't matter because we can only set it if the cooldown is correct and if we are on a, a spot. So we should be fine to hold the button. Come on now. Give me a movable. Oh, nice. And look at that. Look at that. And then you fucking get yourself trapped up in here. So if, I'm going to see. I want to drop it off there. Bang. And then, well, I didn't have any more. And if I drop it there. And if I drop it there. Oh, man. We're playing Barman. I'm not blowing anything up yet. Because that's fine for right now. I think that's actually a fantastic place to stop. I hope you would agree. I hope you would agree, but it doesn't really matter. This is where we're stopping. All the player movement is done. All the collision with the wall and the brick and the bomb is done. Dropping bombs is done. Delay, cooldown delay for dropping bombs is done. The bomb blows up probably after the wrong amount of time, but it's done. The blast is created as a result of the bomb explosion but not very well, but it's in there. And yeah, randomly placed bricks. We got that all figured out.
I had no idea how far we were going to get when we first started this, but I'm pretty glad with the progress so far in me only spending about an hour of my time to do it. The, uh, yeah, it's, it's a decent start. On the next one, we're going to work on the blast expanding and breaking the walls and the enemies. I don't know which one first. Um, the bonus is also fun. I'll show how to make this, like, this should be obvious by the end of this, how to, like, kind of loop it. So you clear the stage and go to the next, clear the stage and go to the next. I'm not going to go through all of the stages because they are actually different from one another. And I'm not going to do all the enemies and all of the things. So we're going to do a fully polished or to a degree. I'm probably not going to do audio for stage one of, of Bomberman with the ability for you to add more if you'd like. And again, it should make sense by the time we're all through. If you're following along, oh, I can't fucking talk at all. If you're following along, thank you so much. Um, Bomberman's a fun time. Enjoy it.